Northern Star, which is I think is really interesting here, the fact that um, we've got Northern Star and the grey have hit our sort of quarterly momentum there, which is pretty amazing because gold stock's been pretty weak here on, until the last probably, what, six or seven days here. So we really only got up, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days up here, and we've already hit the, the quarterly momentum on a seven-day rise. So pretty, pretty, you know, a little of that volume there, it's actually pretty healthy. Um, the grey as well. So there's some, you know, okay volume, some of these gold stocks there. Um, pretty interesting that gold stocks came up in our weekly list as well, Chris. So that was the last stock on the quarterly. Uh, I won't go to the weekly one, but if we look at some of those golds there, Gold Road came in at number 21. Again, pretty strong volume in here. Um, I think Sandfire was in there. Again, some pretty decent volume. Um, I think Capricorn was number one. That's Capricorn's gold as well, but I think it is. Um, some, some okay volume there. Our, our Regis Resources, all that good good volume through there as well. So, And Silver Lake was on the list as well. So there's just a ton of gold stocks in our weekly um, launch pad. So all that. Nice strong volume here. So this is the first time sort of for a while here we've seen some really decent buying, some good solid volume in, in some of these gold stocks here. So um, what's that tell you about trading and positioning and getting set up? Like does that move it yeah, up on your watch list? It does, yeah. So definitely puts it on, the, on my list for sure. It's like some of those, um, yeah, so some of those stocks have had some pretty good volume here. So I'll probably look, wait for some little consolidation there probably want to see pullback volume dry up, some sort of flag or consolidation pattern there. And then, yeah, by the break here. But that, that's a really interesting sign there. And that, it's funny, that sort of coincides with um, on, the, on the weekly report there, we covered, I think it was this week or last week there, the, the US dollar, how that sort of um, had that exhaustive sort of top there. And you saw most of those other currencies have just got crucified and almost... Um, been been buried, you know, like the pound and stuff. They're really they've they've capitulated into lows. So we got sort of you know potentially you've got a um, a change in trend in the US dollar, and that's sort of it's, you know like a lot of people who follow gold there will, will tell you that the gold's been going you know has almost been the inverse of the US dollar here for the last twelve months. So really strong you know um, correlation there um, between those markets, almost inverse. So if gold uh, is showing signs of turning up here and that US dollar is actually starting to exhaust and starting to turn down here, it could be quite significant for, for the gold stocks. And we know sort of in high inflationary periods in the past that gold has been one of those sort of, um, you know, sort of high performing sort of stocks there, with the, almost sort of flock to safety. But I know I, the only thing for me is I've, I've noticed gold's got a, a better correlation with equity markets than, <laughs> than anything else. But I think there's obviously a high correlation with the US dollar as well, but just interesting here. We've sort of seen some volume across the board in um, in those. 